up this list in our number 10 spot, we have a black granite sarcophagus. In 2018, archaeologists in Egypt found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria, Egypt that dated all the way back to 2000 years ago. Rumors immediately started swirling about what this sarcophagus might have contained, but the best way to find out? Well, you have to open it, of course. Instead of some crazy curse being unleashed, the first thing that escaped this tomb when opened was a horrible, unbearable smell. Apparently it was so bad that the site had to be evacuated for a while before they could return to finish opening it up. When they finally were able to completely lift the lid, they found a red brown like sewage water flooding the bottom, which is likely where that horrible smell was coming from. Other than all that gross stuff, inside the sarcophagus were the bones of three people. Unfortunately the mummies did not end up being well preserved, so only the skeletal remains were still intact. It is believed that the people inside may have been soldiers from the time of pharaohs. This is believed because one of the skulls had a crack in it from an arrow. There was a bust found along with the tomb, but unfortunately due to time past, it has been weathered beyond recognition, but that is not the only way researchers can find out where the soldiers are from and what time period they lived in. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Knife Armed Man. In 2018, while research Researchers were excavating a 1,200 to 1,400 year old necropolis in northern Italy, they made a gruesome discovery that led to us learning a super interesting story of someone who lived all those years ago. Inside this necropolis there were the remains of a man, but what set him apart from the others is that he had a knife blade prosthetic arm. Further analysis of his bones showed that his arm had been removed via blunt force trauma. Normally all those years ago the wounds would have killed you, if not from the blood loss than from infection because of course this was a time before antibiotics, but somehow this man managed to survive it all, and in doing that, he made himself the scariest prosthetic limb I've ever heard of. He replaced his missing hand with a long knife buckled to his arm with leather straps. It's like pretty metal. <laughs> In our number 8 spot today we have the Tomb of Thomas. A few years ago archaeologists were searching in the Tomb of Thomas who is a high ranking Egyptian official. Within the tomb they found jars that contained something they weren't exactly sure of. Well, further research was able to date this substance back 3200 years ago and guess what it was? Cheese. Dr. Enrico Greco from the University of Catania, who worked with colleagues from the Cairo University in Egypt to determine what this substance was, said, quote, The material analyzed is probably the most ancient archaeological solid residue of cheese ever found to date. We know it was made mostly from sheep's and goat's milk, but for me, it's really hard to imagine a specific flavor. While this is a super cool discovery and one that gives us incredible insight into those times thousands of years ago, imagine finding a thousand year old cheese. That sounds absolutely disgusting. Honestly, I'm so grateful for the scientists who put up with things like that so we can have answers to these sorts of things. In our number 7 spot today we have cats. In 2018, archaeologists were excavating a 4,500 year old tomb that was found near Cairo, and if you're a cat person, this one might be one for you to skip over. Inside of this tomb not only did researchers find 100 gilded wooden cats along with a bronze statue of Bastet, the goddess of cats, but they made the startling discovery of dozens of mummified cats. It is known in ancient Egyptian culture that cats were highly regarded and admired by humans. They weren't necessarily worshipped or anything like that, but they did see them as divine. The tomb these cats were found in has been dated back to the 5th dynasty of the Old Kingdom. While the looks of the cats is an absolutely horrifying one. Not only was this find incredibly interesting, but it also showed that the mummification process is highly effective. In our number 6 spot today we have scratch marks. When archaeologists opened a tomb they had located that dated all the way back to the Qing dynasty, they certainly did not expect to find what was inside. They weren't shocked to find the remains of a person, but what was shocking was the state she was in. Her skin had turned black like charcoal and she had a terrifying expression on her face with her mouth wide open like she had been screaming. To make matters even worse, apparently there were scratch marks that she had left on the inside. Further research showed that it is believed that this woman suffered from a difficult birth and during labour she fainted. Since childbirth used to be a way more dangerous activity, it is thought that her family believed she had passed away and then they buried her and of course you know the rest. What a horrifying story for everyone involved. In our number 5 spot today we have the Silver Sumerian Harp. The Silver Sumerian Harp was found in a very large royal tomb of ancient Sumeria. 
You might be sitting there thinking, a harp isn't exactly terrifying, and I agree. This harp certainly was not a terrifying find, but the scene it was found amongst absolutely was. The tomb contained not only the harp, but the musician who was playing it, along with an entire group of musicians, servants, and several soldiers, all who were sealed in this tomb while they were performing their duties. Many of them were dressed in what was considered formal attire and were wearing gorgeous jewelry. The area where all of these people were found is referred to as the death pit because of the large number of bodies found within it. Music was an incredibly important part of life, celebratory, and ritual occasions in ancient Mesopotamia. In our number 4 spot today we have the Tomb of Sunken Skulls. In 2009, archaeologists were excavating the bottom of a prehistoric dry lake bed in Sweden when they began to find the foundations of some sort of a stone structure. Yeah, we're talking about a tomb found at the bottom of a lake. Further research began to unearth the usual things like animal bones, stone tools, and that sort of thing, but they also uncovered skulls belonging to 10 people that are believed to have lived 8,000 years ago. They found another 11th skull buried deep within the mud, and when they uncovered it, they found that fragments of another one of the skulls had been deliberately lodged inside of this 11th skull. Almost all of the skulls were jawless and were mounted on stakes. There are a few theories as to why the skulls were here, and some people believe that this site may have been used for secondary burials, but others believe that this tomb belonged to enemies that were killed in combat. Combat. Either way, researchers were rightfully shocked when they unearthed this tomb. In our number 3 spot today we have Biscuit Beetles. Okay. I know this one won't be horrifying to everyone, but as you guys know, I really hate bugs a lot, so this one seems like my worst nightmare. As it turns out, mummies aren't the only things that tombs can preserve. Unfortunately, some little beetles from 3,000 years ago managed to find themselves preserved inside of a loaf of funerary bread that was found inside of a tomb inside the necropolis of ancient Thebes. Food would often be left inside of ancient Egyptian tombs because they were symbolic offerings intended to feed the deceased in the afterlife. Well, the deceased apparently weren't the only ones chowing down because a bunch of biscuit beetles were found inside the bread. I just can't imagine being stoked to find a mummy and instead finding bugs. In our number 2 spot today we have the tomb of Hatshepsut. She was the 5th pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt and she was the second historically confirmed female pharaoh. She was an incredibly interesting person who we could really talk about all day, but we are here talking about tombs so let's cut to when hers was found and unearthed. There were a few interesting things found within her tomb, but the real hordes came after when they began to examine her remains. They were actually able to find a cause of death for her and can actually attribute it to something she possessed. They found benzoprine carcinogenic skin lotion with the pharaoh, and it is believed that this gave her bone cancer. It is likely that she poisoned herself accidentally while she was just trying to soothe her skin. Being diagnosed with something like that with the help of modern medicine is already a horrible, painful, and scary thing. I couldn't even imagine having to go through it all those years ago without any kind of a treatment. In our number one spot, today we have this ancient curse. To end off this list today we have a good old fashioned curse that was unleashed from inside of a tomb. Okay, maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration, but there really was a curse found on the inside of this tomb. The tomb of Ankh-Mahor, who is a pharaoh's official who is thought to have lived around 4,000 years ago during Egypt's 6th dynasty, was an above ground tomb that was shaped like a rectangular box. Inside of the tomb they found a curse inscribed that warned anyone who dared to disturb it. The curse, roughly translated, states that anything a trespasser, quote, might do against this, my tomb, the same shall be done to your property. It then goes on to warn the trespasser of his knowledge of spells and secret magic, and it threatens to fill impure intruders with the fear of seeing ghosts. These kind of curses have been found in other tombs, and while they certainly are nothing like the ones depicted in horror movies about mummies, it might still be a little unnerving to those unearthing this discovery. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have KV55. This is a tomb that is referred to by a number rather than a name because we don't actually know who lies inside of the tomb. While this tomb had its modern discovery in 1907, we still haven't quite found the answers surrounding this mystery. To make things a little more eerie, while the walls of the actual tomb are bare, which is bizarre, as you walk down the steps towards the tomb, you'll notice that there are some markings leading up to it. You'll see inscribed on the wall of the entrance the words which can be translated to, quote, the evil one shall not live again. If this 
this wasn't enough to give you an unsettling feeling, the coffin inside of the tomb has been desecrated with part of the face having been removed as well. So all in all, we don't know a lot about what's going on down there, but it doesn't seem good. In our number 9 spot today we have chapter 17. Archaeologists had a large and very exciting discovery as the 4,200 year old funerary temple of Queen Neerit, who was the wife of the pharaoh Teddy, was found. The recently excavated Soraka necropolis was stocked full of incredible treasures. Inside there were over 50 wooden sarcophagi, there was a board game, a river boat with rowers, statues, wooden masks, a shrine dedicated to the god of the dead Anubis, and there was a burial sanctuary dedicated to the queen, and while all of these are truly unbelievable finds, one of the most fascinating to researchers was a scroll from the Book of the Dead. The 13 foot long papyrus scroll, which is referred to as chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead, acts as a chilling guide to the afterlife. In our number 8 spot today we have Golden Tongues. A team was working at a temple on the outskirts of the Egyptian city Alexandria when they discovered 16 burials in rock cut tombs. It was here that they found some mummies that unfortunately had been poorly preserved over the last 2000 years, but it was what they found with these mummies that was exceptionally interesting. Inside a few of the mummies mouths were golden tongues nestled inside of their jawbones. It is thought that the dead were given these gold foil amulets that were shaped like tongues so that they could speak before the court of the god Osiris in the afterlife. Osiris is the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life, and vegetation, and he was also the judge of the dead so it is imperative that those headed to the afterlife impress him. When we break it down and understand why these gold tongues might have been placed with the bodies, it becomes less of a horrifying discovery and more of an absolutely fascinating one. In our number 7 spot today we have 5,000 year old tombs. While researchers were working in the Dakhalia province in the area where the Nile River drains into the Mediterranean Sea, they found something unbelievable. It was here that they unearthed tombs that were over 5,000 years old. 68 tombs from 3300 BC during the Bhutto period were located, along with five that were from 3100 BC during the Nakata III period. Some of the Bhutto tombs were found with the human remains in a squatting position, while the Nakata period vessels were more cylindrical and pear shaped. This cemetery combines some of the earliest periods of Egyptian history along with some of the most important eras. Other cool things found in this area included ovens, stoves, pottery vessels, as well as amulets and scarabs some of which were made out of semi-precious stones. In our number 6 spot today we have Marcus. Inside the necropolis of Porto Sarno, which was found in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, a tomb was found which held the remains of Marcus Venerius Secundio, and these remains are the best preserved ones ever found in ruins. The partially mummified remains included hair and bones and even a partial ear, and they belong to Marcus, who was a former slave who was able to rise through the ranks. This discovery was unusual usual because tests showed that Marcus died around the age of 60 and during Roman times adults were usually cremated. After being freed from slavery, Marcus was able to join a college of priests who were in charge of a form of emperor worship. Being buried inside of a tomb is a reflection of the fact that when he passed, he was in good social and economic standing. It is believed that this tomb dates back decades before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD destroyed Pompeii. In our number 5 spot today we have Tomb Storeroom. During the excavations of a 2,600 year old vast necropolis that sits just south of Cairo, researchers unearthed a tomb, of course, or else why would I be talking about it right now, but here's the thing about this specific tomb. It had a storeroom that was housing about two dozen mummies. The tomb was located at the bottom of a 36 feet deep shaft, and the 22 mummies were found along the tomb walls. The mummies are believed to date back to 640 BC during the 26th dynasty, which was Egypt's last independent kingdom. Many of the mummies were unfortunately poorly preserved, so their identities as well as the reason why so many were put into one room is left as a bit of a mystery. In our number 4 spot today we have a Bronze Age tomb. Imagine you're a farmer in Ireland and one day you're just minding your own business and somehow manage to stumble upon an ancient tomb that's basically been untouched for thousands of years. Well, that's pretty much exactly what happened when a burial site was uncovered on southwest Ireland's Dingle Peninsula 
Inside this site, researchers found human bones along with items that may give us some insights into prehistoric burial and death rituals. This tomb is believed to date back to the Bronze Age, but unlike other tombs from the time, this one was completely underground, which means that it may be even older than once suspected. The tomb was found during some land improvement work when literally a stone was turned over and it revealed the chamber underneath. In our number 3 spot today we have mice. A couple years ago in 2019, as archaeologists were searching through a well preserved and beautifully painted tomb that had been found in the Egyptian town of Sohog, the tomb is thought to be from around 2000 years ago and was built for a man named Tutu and his wife. Other than the human mummies that were found inside of this tomb, researchers also found animal mummies, including dozens of mummified mice. This tomb is one of seven that were found in the area after authorities found smugglers digging illegally for artifacts, which honestly sounds like it should be the plot of a movie. While I'm sure these kinds of discoveries are insanely important and helpful for all kinds of researchers, finding dozens of mummified animals along with human mummies probably isn't the nicest discovery there's ever been. In our number 2 spot today we have a gibbon skull. Gibbons are a type of ape that are often characterized by their swinging ability coupled with their loud, bright calls, and the 8th century Chinese poet Li Bai described their voices as they swung past the Yang River, but here's the thing. Today, there are no gibbons that live anywhere near the river. Also, the gibbons that exist now have different fur patterns from the ones that are often depicted in classical Chinese paintings. This has led experts to believe that there must have been another kind of gibbon that has now vanished, and physical evidence of this kind of gibbon might have turned up in the most unexpected place. A tomb. This tomb, which was built for the grandmother of the first emperor of China nearly 2,300 years ago, contained a skull and a jawbone so distinct that scientists believe they must belong to this member of the now extinct gibbon genus. Many surviving gibbon species are now facing extinction, so it is likely that there were others in the past who unfortunately faced the same kind of fate. In our number one spot today, we have canopic jars. This is a discovery that is actually quite a common find in tombs, but that doesn't make it a pleasant one, although there is a reasonable explanation behind this. Canopic jars are often found in tombs, and in 2018, in the tomb of Carabaskin, which was found on the west bank of Luxor, there were some well preserved jars found. The jars were made of Egyptian alabaster, and they most likely held viscera. That's right, folks, these jars usually held the organs of the person inside of the tomb. They were used during the mummification process in order to store and preserve the organs so that they could be used in the afterlife. There wasn't just one jar, but rather a jar for specific organs. While in modern times this is a gruesome discovery, it's also absolutely fascinating to see how people of the past cared for those who have passed away, as well as seeing how strong the belief in the afterlife used to be. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have fire mummies. This discovery isn't necessarily one that came from a tomb, but it is from an ancient burial site, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. This is something that was discovered when loggers ended up stumbling upon the Kabayan burial caves and found a bunch of tiny nut-like coffins. This led people to wonder how the ancient culture of the Ibaloi, the ones who created these burial caves, managed to fit the deceased inside of these small coffins, and the answer is unbelievably fascinating. When a member of the tribe was close to death, they were forced to gulp down a bunch of salt water, which essentially would begin the curing process from the inside out. Once they died, they would be rubbed down with herbs and then literally slow roasted over a period of weeks or months, and it is said to help speed up the process, members of the tribe would blow tobacco smoke inside of the body. In the end, this would create a compact and well-preserved corpse that could be placed into these tiny coffins. The method actually worked so well that you can still see their intricate tattoos to this day. In our number 9 spot today, we have the unmarked sarcophagus. When archaeologists in Egypt found a mysteriously large black granite sarcophagus that was unmarked, they knew they were going to find something unexpected inside, but it truly was worse than anyone could have imagined. When opened, this sarcophagus the sarcophagus was found to contain three skeletons, but unfortunately and disgustingly, according to officials, sewage had leaked into the coffin from a nearby road, which left these skeletons resting in that awful mess. Not only do I feel bad for the people who made this discovery, because truly how awful would that be, but I feel terrible for the people these skeletons belong to. Honestly, sometimes I feel like we should leave things and the dead alone, but in times like this, I'm glad these people were found. Further analysis revealed that those buried inside of the coffin included 
with a young woman and two young men, all of which appear to have been placed on top of each other in different burials. One of the skeletons had clearly been on the receiving end of a medical treatment called trepanation, or making holes in the skull. In our number 8 spot today we have the Lothigam North Pillar site. One of the most incredible archaeological finds in Kenya led to a well. It wasn't exactly a horrifying discovery, but it certainly was unexpected. Around 5,000 years ago, a tribe of herders paused by a lake in what is now Kenya in order to bury their dead. This ended up turning into one of the most massive and monumental construction projects Africa has ever seen, which is no easy feat. For 450 years, they dug into the bedrock, piled up slabs of sandstone, and buried their dead for generations with ritual ceremonies, and this led to what researchers now consider the earliest and largest monumental cemetery in Eastern Africa. Here's the one kind of unexpected thing that they found here at this site though. Along with the bodies of those who had passed, researchers also found 405 gerbil teeth at this site. As it turns out, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for this, and it's because they were used to make a headpiece for just one of those who had passed away. This site might not be as large and tall as some of the other monuments like the Pyramids of Giza, but what makes them most remarkable is that this site was made by the people for the people. Not for emperors or kings and queens, it was for tribe members of every age and gender all buried alongside each other. In our number 7 spot today we have the ancient virus. With modern science comes ancient discoveries. Using advanced DNA sequencing on a 16th century mummy, a team of scientists revealed the complex and evolutionary history of hepatitis B or the HBV virus. The genomic data was extracted from a 450 year old mummy and it is the oldest evidence we have of the virus which suggests that humans have lived with and evolved alongside HBV. HPV for centuries. While it's terrible to think of people suffering from an infection, especially one that thanks to modern medicine we have a vaccine for, this discovery gives immeasurable insight into the virus itself and this can be used to help scientists understand it better. While I mentioned that there is a vaccine, this is something that is still highly deadly in our world for people who don't have access to it. The more we can learn about it, the better understanding we can have, which will hopefully in turn save people's lives. In our number 6 spot today we have the Netherlands catacombs. Earlier this this year, while work was being done on a church in Delft, which is in the Netherlands, in order to extend the royal burial chamber that exists within the catacombs, there were about 200 skeletons that were suddenly uncovered. After months of digging, archaeologists reached a depth of 1.5 meters and they had found 150 people in proper graves, with 4-5 to five people found buried together in various charnel repositories. The discovery came shortly after there were bones from medieval times found on the square which the church stands, and it is said that researchers were finding a large difference between the two sets of remains. The square is said to have been a burying ground for the poor, while the church was left for the rich, which is where the main difference stems from, as people in the court are usually younger and in notably worse condition. Research is now being done to identify who these people may have been on both accounts. There's something really eerie about finding 200 skeletons located in the catacombs beneath a church. Okay, it's not a little eerie. It's a lot eerie. In our number 5 spot today we have ancient tomb art. This tomb comes to us from a long time ago and it was located in the Shamir Heights in northern Israel. This tomb is large and it's made up of 400 tons of boulders and it stretches 65 feet wide. This chamber is said to date back 4,000 years, which is a shocking discovery because that means that humans may have been a part of an organized society in this area all those years ago. There are many paintings that have been found inside of this tomb which made this the first time art had been documented inside one of these chambers in the Middle East, which is incredible. We just haven't exactly been able to figure out what they depict yet. Inside of the chamber there were the remains of three people. One of the most fascinating parts of this discovery is that there are these lines carved into the ceiling that are all connected to one arc, but we just don't know what it means. In our number 4 spot today we have the Inca mummies. In 1976, researchers found two mummies at a burial site in northern Chile. These two corpses belonged to two young women who were the victims of human ritual sacrifice. It is likely that the sacrifice they were a part of was one that was carried out by the Inca to commemorate either historical or political events or as a response to natural disaster. The mummies were found wearing silver ornaments and they were surrounded by ceramic vessels and they were wearing red robes. The red in the Inca clothing was often created using 
hematite or other iron oxides, but upon further inspection of these mummies, it was revealed that their red clothing held something much more dangerous. The dye used for their clothing contained cinnabar, which is a mineral rich in mercury. This was often used in the ancient world as a pigment for makeup, clothing, and painting, but handling it leads to mercury poisoning. What is strange is that researchers believe that the toxicity of cinnabar was known in ancient Peru, so we aren't exactly sure why they used it in the first place, but it's thought it might have been used as protection against grave robbers. In our number 3 spot today we have Man E. Ok, so normally when you're out in the field searching for mummies and tombs and all of that sort of archaeological business in Egypt, the containers or vessels that the past people are put in are decorated or contain some sort of drawings or writings. So in 1886 when Gaston Maspero, who was the head of the Egyptian antiquities, came across a plain burial box, he was a little intrigued as to what could be inside. This box had no information as to who the person inside may or may not be. But the corpse inside was wrapped in sheepskin, which apparently was considered unclean by the ancient Egyptians. When unwrapped, it was revealed that this person had both their hands and their feet bound, and as he looked towards the face of this person, he found what appeared to be a screaming face looking back at him. Back in 1886, we didn't have the same amount of information as we do now, so of course this quickly freaked researchers out and led to everyone believing that this person must have been tortured to death. How scary that must have been! But luckily, with the things we know now, we have a much less horrific answer. If the jaw of a person isn't strapped shut, when a body is mummified, the jaw naturally falls open, thus this horrible screaming expression. The real mystery that remains is how this mummy, who clearly wasn't considered a person of royalty, came to be buried alongside kings and queens. In our number 2 spot today we have the Phaleron Delta Necropolis. In 2016, during the construction of a new library and opera house in Athens, crews accidentally accidentally stumbled upon this necropolis, which is a cemetery that is the final resting place of more than 1,500 citizens from ancient Greece. And while this most definitely is an eerie discovery and a reminder of our own mortality, the horrifying discovery came when they found a smaller chamber within this one, and inside there were more than 80 skeletons that all had their hands shackled above their heads. How's that for a horrifying discovery? Each of these skeletons belonged to people who died young and healthy, and while the exact cause of death is is yet to be determined, all signs are pointing to some kind of mass execution. Right now, the best theory as to who these people may have been is that they may be some of the people who were part of a coup in 632 BC that was led by Cylon against Athens. It's just strange that even after these people passed, they didn't unshackle them, but that just might be a mystery destined to stay a secret. In our number 1 spot today we have the ancient mystery. Ok, this is one of the coolest things I've ever heard and it has me rethinking my career. Maybe I do want to be an archaeologist after all. Basically, researchers have found a 1,300 year old Chinese mystery and where did they find it? In a tomb raider's shaft. This feels like a Hollywood blockbuster and somehow it's just real ancient life. While excavating a tomb in China, the team discovered the skeleton of a young man who was riddled with wounds, giving clues as to how he died. The man is estimated to have been about 25 years old and it is thought that he was harmed and then thrown into the tomb raider shaft while he was still alive, which is absolutely gruesome. It is believed that this crime took place between 640 and 680 AD. It appears as though he wasn't a thief because the shaft had begun to be refilled with soil by the time of his death, so we really aren't sure why this young man met this cruel fate. As a true crime enthusiast, this is absolutely fascinating and I really wish we could find some answers to bring this guy's story full circle, but sometimes these things just stay a secret. Mm -hmm.